My sister just asked me a very interesting question um, and I gave her an answer and it ended up turning into a discussion with my mom as well. Um, and I decided to share the question and the answer and a bit of the discussion with you guys. My sister asked me, Penwell, <laughs> do you think you're difficult or are you easy to date? <laughs> uh, and initially I was like, look, I'm, I'm quite difficult to date. Then I was like, no, man. Actually, it's, it's both yes and no. Uh, and then I went on to elaborate. Um, I think I'm very easy to date because I'm very low maintenance as, as a man and as a guy. I never really expect anything from, I've never really expected anything from my partners. Whether it's cooking for me, washing dishes, cleaning the house, gifts, um, trips, presents. I've never really been into like a lot of stuff. I'm very low maintenance. I'm a minimalist. I don't require much. Even from some of the softer things, like maybe like having regular sex, uh, getting phone calls and messages. I don't, I don't need all of that. You know, I'm, I'm very low maintenance. Um, so any woman that is with me, anything that she does for me, I appreciate very much um, because past partners have, bought things for me, they've cooked for me, they've cleaned for me, they've given me great advice, they've given me opportunities, um, they've invested in some of my ventures. So I've been very blessed and thankful for everything they've done, very grateful. Uh, but I've never really expected it and it's not something I expect from a partner. So I think that makes me very easy. I'm extremely loyal. It's one of the things that actually upsets a lot of women that have been with me. Uh, women in how they are raised are very much raised to monopolize everything about the man his resources his time <laughs> his sperm uh, his money everything so the fact that any ex of mine can potentially uh, ask me for help with anything and i'm willing to help uh, i'm not talking about loyalty in the sense of cheating and fidelity I've, I've struggled with that in the past i'm talking about true loyalty like real human stuff like you need a lift from the airport you need a bit of money uh, you need support because someone in your family has passed away you need advice you need an opportunity somewhere. Um, I'm willing to offer those things. Um, which is not to be confused with being a yoni, you know, being an idiot, uh, someone who's easily used. Um, I'm loyal, but I will not just help any ex of mine who takes me for a fucking cunt and wants me to assist her with bullshit. I'm not going to drive long kilometers unnecessarily. And I'm not going to help her at the expense of disrespecting a partner that I am with. Um, that's what makes me easy to be with, I believe. However, what makes me difficult to be with, extremely difficult, is the fact that I'm not normal. I'm not a normal man. A lot of women are raised to have this idea of what a male partner is meant to be based on television, church, school, uh, romance novels, romantic comedy movies, and I guess what their friends see in their partners, you know. And a lot of guys end up aspiring to be these men. I'm not one of those guys. Um, for one, I don't drink and smoke. I don't club and party. So I don't go out. I don't go dancing. Um, I don't believe in giving girls money just to give them money. Money for hair and nails. I don't believe in that stuff. Um, I'm not religious, which makes it difficult because a lot of people base their partner on, do you pray? Do you believe in God? Do you think he will help us and whatever? I don't believe in that. I'm not a culturalist, so I don't believe in Amadlozi. Uh, I don't believe in Umvilmangi. I don't believe in following uh, African customs, you know, so that makes it difficult as well. And what then graduates from that is the fact that I don't believe in getting married. I fully believe that marriage is a, is a, is a function of being a staunch religious person or a staunch culturalist. That's where marriage, the union, the formalized union comes from. Today, people get married for all kinds of rubbish reasons, but... And the reason why their marriages fail is because they don't have that function, that core base, that foundation I meant, sorry, not function, that foundation and that core base of either Christianity or Islam or, or being cultural. People want to go around and sleep with the whole world and party and get drunk uh, and job hop and move around countries and be on social media, flirting with people and then expect their marriages to work. They won't. I don't believe in marriage. I don't want to get married. I don't want to be owned. Um, I don't like being possessed. Um, I think I'm very thoughtful. If I'm with you and I'm going somewhere, 
and I'm going to sleep out. I will definitely give you a heads up. I will update you if, if I'm meant to be home at 8 and it's going for 8 and I'm probably going to be home at 10. I alert you because I'm considerate and I understand that you care about me and you worry about me. However, I, I do not feel a need to ask permission to go anywhere, to do anything. All my decisions are myself, including bad things like cheating. That falls on me. Um, I take responsibility for all those things. You know, I'm not going to ask for permission and I'm not going to blame you for any rubbish and bullshit that I do. That's all on me. I don't want to be possessed. I don't want to be owned. I enjoy my freedom. I enjoy doing what I want, going where I want, whenever I want. And I was telling my sister that um, unofficially, I, I stopped dating last year, January, January 2020. And then unofficially, I think, or officially, I think I no longer date from probably last month or the month before. Um... I have female companions, I believe. Uh, however, they understand my stance, <laughs> mostly. Obviously, every girl's got her own wishes. And every girl, when they see the black pen, they want to marry the black pen. <laughs> um, but the bottom line is, like, they kind of understand um, where I'm coming from, what I'm about. What makes me difficult as well is the fact that I want a lot of children. A lot of children uh, with a lot of different women means... I'm probably going to have sex with those women to impregnate them. It means I'm going to have some type of relationship with them, a co-parenting relationship, uh, discussing the kids, having to exchange the kids at, at various times. Um, and that makes a lot of women very uncomfortable and insecure, which is a, it's a huge one. It's a huge red flag. And I normally warn a lot of women that are interested in me that I come with this baggage of I have a lot of kids and I want a lot more. So... If this is going to be a problem for you, it's best you go and find like a normal, typical guy because you will get hurt. Um, if you're here because you have this traditional idea of relationships, you're probably going to get hurt. But if you're here because you enjoy my company, you think I'm a good uh, person to chill with, to learn from, to build with. I'm very happy to build with a female. Um, and you also are comfortable to live your own life. I, I don't imprison women in the slightest any woman that's ever been with me who tells you Penel would ask me where I am, what I'm doing. I must be home at this time. Not me. <laughs> they must be talking about another Penel. I'm not into that life. I let women be very free. Um, however, I am willing to be a father to women. I just don't think I've really had anyone ask that of me. But if you are an, an adult woman who is maybe a partner of mine and you'd like me to be like a father figure where... Um, I must advise you on your life, what to do, where to go. I must maybe shout at you if you're late, if you're failing, as I would any of my children. Um, I'm happy to do that. It comes with responsibility. Uh, but in the same breath, it doesn't mean you can tell me what to do. I don't want a mother. I don't want you to tell me what to do and to shout at me and stuff. I'm an adult. I'm intelligent. I'm self-aware. I have perspective. And I have a vision and a goal and dreams for my life. So that's what makes me both easy and difficult to be with <laughs> as a partner. You know, and my sister said she, she quite understands. The conversation then graduated with my mom to this thing of, of having children and this concept of how today um, a lot of people feel that money is the be all and end all, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of having children, which I think is a pile of bullshit. I've always thought it was a pile of bullshit, but now that I've, I have more knowledge I have more references, I've done more research. I actually have like a backing for why I believe in this. You know, today a lot of my peers, especially in my, I don't know if you'd call it income bracket or in my class, um, they believe without medical aid, without giving birth in a private hospital, without your kids going to what they call a decent school, which is probably costly, without having clothing accounts and without paying for accommodation or having a home, or even having a car. You shouldn't have kids. You can't have kids, etc. And I think it's a pile of bullshit. So I was explaining to my mom that, especially these days, I speak very much about myself as an animal. That I'm an animal. I can walk around naked. Fortunately, it's a crime. But you can walk around naked. In nature, it's not a crime. Because apes walk around naked. Other lions walk around naked. Elephants walk around naked. So we can walk around naked. Uh fundamentally the world is built on a piece of land uh, we don't really need to eat meat but you can eat meat you can plant your own vegetables um, you can make your own fire you can take 
twigs, uh, logs, branches, um, grass, and then maybe get some, some sand with water and put some and turn it into mud and build a mud house and have some kind of a shelter. You can make fire to keep warm. You can make your own clothing or you can get secondhand clothing. You know, a lot of us were raised or a lot of us were born in public hospitals. I've got a lot of friends, even today, with strong, beautiful children that were born in public hospitals. Um, for those that don't know, 90% of all black people in South Africa do not have medical aid. Uh, only 10% of black people have medical aid. About 73% of white people have medical aid, however. Funny enough, on a numbers perspective, there are more black people with medical aid than white people. On a numbers perspective, because there's about 4.8 million black people that have medical aid. And there's probably about 4 million or 3.5 to 4 million white people that have medical aid. But on a percentage basis, 73% of white people have medical aid. 90% of black people don't have medical aid. Um, a lot of us were born in public hospitals. A lot of us had cloth nappies. Speaking in a parents WhatsApp group that I have, uh, mothers talking about, yeah, but cloth nappies give rashes. And I was like, that would mean that all of us had a rash 24-7 while we were kids, which is just utter bullshit. You know, kids pee on those things. You wash them. Um, kids are not go, don't always have diarrhea. Sometimes the poop that they make, you can just throw it off and then just soak the nappy um we don't need uh private health care we don't need uh, medical aid um where i am in terms of my belief system penulism i don't even like the concept of school i like the concept of home education uh, transferring skills and knowledge to my own children getting them to work and apprentice under me and under the guardianship and guidance of uh, some of my friends that have businesses um, that have skills, that have knowledge as well. So I don't even think kids need to go to school. Those that do go to school, government in South Africa offers free education, offers free healthcare. For example, you can go and live in a mud hut, you can get an RDP, you can go live with family. Um, so people's ideas around having kids is very sad for me. I, I think having children is the only worthwhile thing on planet Earth. We're born... We die and in between we keep ourselves busy. And part of keeping yourself busy, I think, is to keep the human race alive. And that's from having children, you know. So I hate that capitalism and capitalist systems have convinced human beings that money is the beginning and the end of having children. And poor people don't deserve to have kids. Um, and people that don't have jobs and don't have money don't deserve to have kids. I think that's bullshit. Instead, we should be educating the poor, we should be educating the unemployed that Guys, leave the city. Go to the villages. Go work the land. Um, go build a mud hut with your own hands. Plant vegetables. You don't even need to eat meat. But you can get chickens. You can eat eggs. You can get your own goats. Get your children to work on that land with you. We are animals fundamentally. All the things that make human life so difficult is human-made. Religion. Uh, culture. We argue over surnames and tribes. Um, we argue over the laws that are man-made, technology, money. That's become like the things that drive people insane. Today, kids kill themselves because they fail a test. A test. A test means nothing in life. It means fuck all. But a child will go and fail a test and then commit suicide because they feel they're not worthy enough. They'll probably amount to nothing. And that's very sad. Today, we've got the people with different uh, sexualities, uh, homosexuals, transgenders, for example. I've said before that if any of my kids are homosexual, it's fine, uh, but I'd like them to please have children for me. There's a huge chance that their children will not be homosexual, and I think they have a responsibility to keep the human race going and to breed. So that was one of the discussions I had uh, with my mother leaning or, or, or emanating from um, the question that my sister asked. It's the conversation that I want to share with you. Um, it might add some value in your life, it might help you think, and obviously it would be nice to hear some of your thoughts on some of these topics as well. This is Penuel the Black Pen, and I hope that you'll have a really, really great and blessed day. Cheers.